All right, now that hockey's done early tonight and everything's relatively quiet around here, I'm going to do my second countdown video of the day because I can. And because I'd, I'd like to do 20 a day because then we get that over with and I get to do something else. We're going to watch a movie after I'm done making this video, so... Um, I don't think we're going to do a review tonight, but we, we, we just never know, do you? Uh, 110. I'm going to cheat on this one. Um, I, this is a cheat. Um, Men in Black. Any of them. One, two, or three. Doesn't matter. To me, th they're not all the same movie, but I have the same feeling about all three of them. They're good movies. Um, and, and three has Alice Eve in it, and I have a large weakness for Alice Eve, I admit. Um... Two has a, a really fun story, and and the part with uh, with Kay where he's at the uh, at the at the um, when he when he's delivering mail, and then of course the first one is is tremendous fun as well. They're they're all really good. I I enjoy all movies equally in in the Men in Black series, so I couldn't decide which one to put on the chart. And I'm like, you know what, Shannon, just just make them all the same. Just make them all the same, because. Really, the the tone of the movies that they're all basically the same, and and they're 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 equally enjoyable. So I don't have a problem with them being all together. One hundred nine, a perfect getaway. This was in the original Hot One Hundred too, and then I had to drop it when I did two hundred. Uh, so, A Perfect Getaway stars Mila Jovovich and uh, uh, Timothy Oliphant's in it, and uh, Keely Sanchez is in it, and um, I'm going to kick myself for this, uh, Chris Hemsworth's in it, and oh, she's so hot too, uh, <laughs> and she was the doctor in uh, Planet... Uh, Shoot. Not Death Proof. Planet Terror, uh, which is the first half of Grindhouse. Anyways, um, and I'll, I'll remember her name and I'll tell it to you guys tomorrow because it's going to drive me nuts all night now. But it is a story about three couples in Hawaii. And there's a couple that's going around murdering other couples and taking their identities. And you have to figure out which couple it is. The best part of A Perfect Getaway is it's a movie you watch through once you find out who the killers are, you finish the movie, and it's got a really heartwarming ending, and it is so much fun. Um, and then you can go back and watch it all over again, and you go, oh man, it's so obvious. That's what makes Perfect Getaway great. There's there's not a lot of uh, gratuitous violence in it. It's a thriller. It's dramatic. And some of the chase scenes towards, like, chase scenes at the end, I was genuinely I'm like, kill him, kill him, kill him. Like, I... I was really into it, and if I'm really into a movie like that, that's a good sign. If I'm really emotionally invested in the climax of a movie, that's a really good sign. And no matter how many times I watch this movie, and I own it, and I, I love watching it, and I got Yvonne to watch it, she enjoyed it. I think there's a review for that on this channel. Um, I, I never get tired of that movie. It doesn't happen. Uh, 108. So Ryan Philippe and uh, Reese Witherspoon got married after making this movie together, Cruel Intentions. Of course, Cruel Intentions is kind of a silly movie, um, but Sarah Michelle Gellar is is fantastic in it. Uh, she's, she was coming out of Buffy the Vampire Slayer at the time, and what a great way to play a villain. She's a fantastic villain. Uh, Ryan Philippe isn't exactly a good guy either. Of course, by the end of the movie, they kind of make it like, oh, he's been redeemed, and it, it, it strikes, rings hollow with me. And then the worst part is, I've got Cruel Intentions with deleted scenes. So I watch the deleted scenes and I'm like, wow, um, Sebastian's a real prick. And, and I, you can't get past that. Uh, Selma Blair's fantastic in this movie as well. Um, there are so many really good performances in this movie. And um, I've watched it a number of times. I love the soundtrack as well. The soundtrack for this movie is great. And it's, it's just, it's really well written uh, for a break from my normal horror. Notice three movies, none of them are horror movies. Uh, I, can, I can do it. I can watch movies that aren't horror movies. 
uh, Cruel Intentions is is a lot of fun, and um, and and yeah, if you haven't seen it, by all means, go out and find it. It's fantastic. Um, it's it's well worth watching more than once if you haven't. One oh seven. Pulp Fiction. I, I know this is going to make uh, fans of, of Tarantino angry. Pulp Fiction at 107 is the highest charting Tarantino movie for me. Um, it would be higher if if I could watch it over and over again. I, I can't. And and I it's just so disturbing. Um, there's some great lines. Zed's dead, honey. Um, honey Bunny, how he calls the, the girl Honey Bunny in the, in the, uh, during the robbery. Uh, when when she's when Yolanda's up there pointing the gun and she says I got to pee, uh, when he says I swear if you give him that money I'm going to shoot him on principle and I'm leaving out a lot of ex expletives when I'm saying that, and it's it's funny because it's a line that I used at my old job a lot and with the expletives of if you do this I'm going to shoot you just on principle like and I would tell my best friend that because he got the joke and and we do that um, or. Um, when when we felt like we were going to snap, um, we would refer back to the Samuel L. Jackson um, in in the diner scene where he would say, "I'm trying real hard, Ringo. I'm trying real hard to be the shepherd. Like I'm trying really hard not to shoot you in the face, shoot her in the face, take the money and run." Um, so anytime we were having a really bad day, and I'd say, "How's your day going?" He'd say, "I'm trying real hard, Ringo," and nobody else around us got the reference. That just meant we're ready to go postal. I'm trying real hard, Ringo. So there you go. If you feel like you're really angry at work, there's a phrase you can use. You won't get in trouble. Nobody's gonna fire you for saying I'm trying real hard, Ringo. That most people won't get the reference. It's it's fun and it's brilliant. Um, 106. Um, following. Uh, Evil Dead in 2013 um, I had a giant crush on the actress from Evil Dead who also played in um, Suburbia? No Suburgatory um, I knew it wasn't Suburbia Suburgatory um, which is a cute little show and got cancelled and, and I, I got it because I, I just saw Mia in my head so every time somebody was being mean to her I'd be like why doesn't she just go demon and stab the girl in the neck um, Don't Breathe she, she hooked up with Fide Alvarez again uh, he is the director of Evil Dead, and she, of course, was the main character in Evil Dead, and now she's the main character in Don't Breathe. The concept behind Don't Breathe is simple. Um, these kids are planning on going to California. They want a, a simple score uh, where they can get a bunch of crap, and then they can just run away. So they can steal a bunch of stuff, a bunch of money, jewelry, whatever, trade it off, and just run to California and be famous. Um, and they decide this is going to be an easy one because this guy's blind. So all we have to do is get in and get out. The guy's blind. He's old. Uh, he looks kind of useless, but once they get in the house, they can't get out. And and it is a psychological thriller. It's not a horror movie. Not a eyes. It's not a horror movie. Mize. It's a psychological thriller to me. Um, it it's terrifying in parts. Um, it's kind of silly in other parts, but it it can be really terrifying. And um, I own the movie. I haven't actually watched it with my wife yet. That's why we haven't got a review of it yet on the channel. But. Uh, it's on the we're gonna watch it list because it is it is a tremendous movie and yeah I, I I can't say enough good things about that movie it is it is very very good all right so that's 106 yes man so Jim Carrey's done some some bad movies He's done some, some pretty bad ones. But Yes Man is a lot of fun. And uh, Zoe Deschanel, of course, is amazing in it because she's amazing in almost everything she does. She's a very good singer, too. If you haven't uh, listened to any of her music, I, I could recommend that as well. While it's not stuff that I would put in, in, in any of my charts or go out and buy CDs of, it's worth listening to. And she's very she's a very, very good singer. Um, and Yes Man is is a... It just... It's... it's it's an hour and a half of, of fun, the idea of when you go through your life, if you say yes to everything, what might happen? And it goes to ridiculous degrees. 
it really it's ridiculous pretty much right off the bat but if you think about it how many times during a day are you going to get asked something that you would have to say yes to that's really life-changing and in his case it almost always seems to be life-changing and uh it's it's good because jim carrey's always at his best when he's a little bit off kilter and in this movie he really shows that so um big fan of that one Movie 104, we're going back to Kurt Russell, we're going back to the 80s, we're going back to Big Trouble in Little China. I, as a kid, when I watched this movie, I decided I wanted to be, I believe it's Jack Burton, is the name of his character, in this, but that's what I wanted to be. I wanted to be just that casual, just that, yeah, I'm the hero, yeah, I'm awesome, even though I'm a bumbling idiot. And things things happen despite my best efforts, rather than because of my best efforts, and and. Uh, bad situations get worse because of Jack Burton and then they just get better because he's still Jack Burton it is it is a, a great movie um, I'm really glad they've never remade it please don't link me to anything about a remake in the comment section below I would really be upset um, and it, it shows that Kurt Russell's at his best when he's uh, smart ass and he's, he's, he's very really at that point in their careers Kurt Russell and, and uh, Harrison Ford were similar but Kurt Russell was the more smart-ass version of a Harrison Ford. Um, Harrison Ford could play the more serious. Uh, and, and Big Trouble in Little China was just awesome. It is... Kim Cattrall's fantastic in it as well. It's just... There's there's so much good stuff in Big Trouble in Little China. It's one of those movies that kind of gets hidden in and amongst 80s crap. And there's a lot of crap in the 80s. Uh, tons. I've got a, 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 a case of, of 100 movies from the 80s. And yeah, it's just... It's bad. Uh, Big Trouble in Little China, though, is very, very good. And it is worthy of being watched multiple, multiple, multiple times. Uh, the best part is there's there's a bad guy that at the end of the movie literally explodes. And he looks a lot like my boss from one of my first jobs. So every time that my boss would start yelling and screaming, I could turn to one of my coworkers and say, is this the part where he explodes? And we could laugh. And again, that's the kind of joke you can get away with at your job without getting fired you got to be able to poke fun at the boss a little bit without the boss realizing and, and having something that he can write down on a piece of paper and fire you over. And is this the part where he's going to blow up? Isn't something they can write down on a piece of paper and write you up for it? Although if you're going to get written up, that's something that you'd want to frame and throw that up on the wall. Um, 103. You know what? I lied. Inglorious Bastards is 103. That's a Tarantino movie. Um, <clears throat> so what makes Inglorious Bastards number 103? Um, Brad Pitt saying, I can speak Italian. I really, I don't, I don't know anything else to say that, that would be um, remotely as funny as Brad Pitt's character with his really, really, really thick accent saying that he can speak Italian. And when you're watching the movie, you're like, this is bad because they're going undercover right they're 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 going to infiltrate nazis and they're 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 going to, to to deal with the germans and get rid of the whole german command system and it all hinges on whether or not brad pitt's character can speak convincing italian and at no point in the movie do you think yeah he can pull that off but because it's brad pitt who i have to say after legends of the fall i was convinced was some pretty boy who i hope would be gone soon and that had changed by the time Inglorious Bastards came out to me saying, because Brad Pitt's in it, I'm going to want to watch it. The only reason I watched World War Z was for Brad Pitt. Bad movie, Brad. Just throwing that out there. Um, but it, Inglorious Bastards is just... It's it's uh, it's disturbing in parts. It's very violent. Uh, it's dark. And, and yet it doesn't take itself too seriously. Um, there are some fantastic performances in this movie. Uh, Christoph Waltz was, of course, uh, the guy who stole the entire movie. This is the movie that really uh, brought him up to the forefront, and, and rightfully so. He's delightful in this movie, and he's delightfully evil in this movie as well. Um, the the hunting of the Jews that is done by this man is, is vile and hateful and horrible, and the payoff in the movie is wonderful. And The Inglorious Bastards, which was based on a movie from a long time before... 
I'm going to go ahead and guess it's loosely based on the movie that came a long time before that they didn't feature quite as many head bashings with uh, with aluminum baseball bats. I'm just going to go out there and say that probably was not a feature in the original version of Vinglorious Bastards. I'm just I'm I'm guessing. Number 102. too long. Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors. Uh, Dream Warriors drops out of the top 100. Shannon from the 80s, somewhere back in time, just went, wait, what? This movie was one of my top five favorite movies of all time back then. I, I had I had the Dawkins CD, uh, Back for the Attack, which had this song on it. I thought Dawkins was awesome. Um, and, and I watched the video every day. I watched the movie... I want to say I've seen Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors 50 times, but it might be more than that. Um, and that most of that is on VHS at home. Uh, it was a burn copy, so badass pirate here. Um, Dream Warriors uh, tells a decent story, and it came out of Freddy's Revenge Part 2, which was this baffling, weird, we're going to completely do away with the plot line from the first movie, the only thing we're going to make the same is the house and Freddy. But how he lives and, and how he exists and what he's doing and what his revenge is about, that doesn't matter. We just need to get a Freddy movie out there because Nightmare on Elm Street made money. So we need to get a Freddy movie out. We don't care what the plot line is. We don't care who the director is. We need to make more money off this, this property. Uh, part 3 took it back to where it should have been. Brings Nancy back in. Uh, brings in a, a, a cast of kids you care about. I cared about every character in this movie, which is why part four is much lower down on this countdown because the first thing to do at the start of part four is take the kids that survive part three and just kill them off. It's like all of the buildup that part three was. Everything these kids did in part three, it was like, ah, it's part four. We just we got to kill the survivors first. I was so angry at the end of part four, I went home and wrote a, a part five of my own where I found a way to bring those kids back because I was so angry. I can't even remember what it was called. Um, the Dream House, I think I called it. Fr uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 5, The Dream House. And and I had the entire movie about that house that Nancy lives in in the first movie and that they have a, a, a toy of in the third movie and they still focus on in the fourth movie, even though I don't think anybody lives in it then. It's it's uh, Kirsten's mom and she doesn't care. I No, 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 nobody lives in it. It's all boarded up. So the idea was that all of the souls were actually trapped in the house. So when they got out of Freddy, they actually went to the house. They didn't go away. It doesn't matter. It never I, it never got made into a movie, did it? No, they had to make Dream Child instead. Where Freddy's trying to embed his, himself into a zygote. Because that was smart. That was a brilliant idea. And then Freddy's dead, which... Ah. What the hell was with Freddy's dead? Like, oh, we're going to put Roseanne and, and Tom Arnold into a movie because that's going to make it better. The last movie sucked. Well, let's get Roseanne and Tom Arnold into it. I know. We're going to do a Wizard of Oz dream sequence, too. Seriously. We're going to do the last half hour in, in 3D and just make it a giant piece of crap. Oh, that's a brilliant idea. Can we get Johnny Depp in it? Yeah, but just as a cameo. And if you don't pay attention and if you turn away for two seconds, you miss it. Oh, that's a good idea. <sighs> Stupid Freddy movie. They had it in part three. They had it all figured out. So uh, number 101 and ending this part of the countdown, um, Requiem for a Dream. Requiem for a Dream is a movie that does not accurately portray how people act while uh, they've actually done heroin. Uh, it shows uh, their eyes reacting in a way that, that they don't, and it shows them acting in a way that's not completely accurate with, with, with drugs and the way they, they interact with people's brains and bodies, but... What Requiem for a Dream does is it really shows a depraved life of a young man and his girlfriend who have decided that uh, they want to make some money. They're going to sell some drugs. And of course, uh, the biggest mistake you can make, other than selling illegal drugs, which is bad, I don't recommend it, um, is to try them yourself before you sell them. Because when you're an addict, you're probably going to try too much. And uh, you're probably going to cut into your profits just a little bit. Requiem has the most beautiful soundtrack ever. 
Uh, it has also got some of the most disturbing sequences in the history of movies. Um, the, the part with the fridge is terrifying. And I'm, I'm not sure what it is about the fridge that's terrifying, but the first time I saw it, I was genuinely terrified of the fridge. Even though I realized this was just a weird, drugged-out uh, fantasy that wasn't actually happening, I was terrified of that fridge. Um, and and the, the actor who played Shooter McGavin in... Uh, yeah, it was Shooter, Shooter McGavin from, from Happy Gilmore is in this. Uh, and, and they get into some of this, and there's some weird elements of this movie that you go, well, wait a minute, was the mother actually invited to be on this show? Yeah, no, she was, and and I think she was, and then nothing, nothing. And there's all these weird parts of it where you're like, well, wait, did these people really have this plan? Yeah, I guess they did. But it just, once, once it starts to fall off the rails, it goes way off the rails. So if you know somebody that has a drug problem and they don't really understand how drugs work, I recommend making them watch Requiem for a Dream. Because it doesn't understand how drugs work either, but it knows drugs are bad. So basically, it's, uh, drugs are bad, okay? That's basically it. Um, to, to quote South Park, that's that's basically how far it goes. Uh, and it, it, is, it is haunting, it is beautiful. Um, and it, it takes Jennifer Connelly... And it, it puts her into um, a situation where, um, if you've seen the unedited version, and that's the version I own, uh, if you've seen the, the scene at the party, you guys know where I'm going with this. It's it's the line from that movie that everybody says, so you've seen it, so you know about, and I'm not doing it here because, I'm, because I can't, I can't qualify this family content and talk about what it was. But uh, yeah, it's, it's shocking, it's disturbing. And uh, seeing old guys who are just all ah, just yeah, um, yeah, just 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 stay away. I, and and the funny thing is, I'm going to throw this out and it's true. I've never ever done any kind of drugs, whether it's even even just mushrooms, hash, marijuana, none of it. I don't, the, no, because nobody ever explained to me what any of them did that I went, okay, I need to try that. They just explained how they made you feel. And I'm like, so when I stay up all night at a sleepover and just drink pop and eat sugar all right or you know the whole paranoid or seeing things and like i'm already paranoid and seeing things i already talked to myself enough i don't need any of that crap to help out with that anyways the movie though highly recommended so that's the bottom hundred so for people who are like i'm just waiting until he gets the top 100 guess what tomorrow you get your wish but for now and for this i'm done thanks for watching hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happen upon this video across the internet and hey I'll talk to you again soon.